Welcome to this video lecture. It's actually, we're going to be solving a, an example problem today covering heat exchangers and how to find the overall heat transfer coefficient. I'll go ahead and read the problem statement. It says, a heat exchanger with thick tubes is used to boil water on the shell side by recovering heat from a stream of hot thermal oil which flows through the tubes. We're given the inner convection heat transfer coefficient of HI equals 346 watts per meter squared Kelvin which stays constant down the whole length of the tubes. The tubes are each 20 meters long and they have an inner radius of 5 centimeters and an outer radius of 7 centimeters. With a thermal conductivity given, we're also told that the shell side and the tube side have each been recently cleaned. So what that tells us is we can neglect any fouling thermal resistance. We're asked to find the overall heat transfer coefficient for heat transfer from the oil in the tubes to the water in the boiler based on the inner surface area of the tubes. So let's go through our assumptions. So we have thermal resistances in series, first of all. We need, heat needs to get from this oil inside the tubes. It needs to convect from the, the oil to the inner part of the tube. Then it's got to make it through the tube itself. So we're told that we have thick tubes. So what that tells us is we have to account for the thermal resistance of the tubes. Sometimes these problems have thin tubes, and that leads you to the opposite assumption, that you can neglect the thermal resistance of the tube. And then finally, um, the heat propagates from the outside wall of the tube into this violently boiling water. So when you have a boiling pro process, often those convective, uh, the convective heat transfer coefficients are very high. In this case, we're given this extra prompting language to tell us, okay, maybe we can neglect the thermal resistance from the outside of the tube into this violently boiling water. And if you want to picture what that's like, just imagine this violently boiling water, you're going to get a lot of turbulence, a whole lot of motion in here. So heat, it's going to be a very efficient way of carrying heat away from that tube into this mixing and violently boiling water. So when you have thermal resistances, in this case they're in series, so heat first needs to go convect, then conduct, then convect. So we have thermal resistances in series. We have no fouling, so we can neglect fouling. So we're going to get our total is equal to the convective thermal resistance from the inside plus the conductive thermal resistance through the pipe wall. And then we have the convective thermal resistance on the outside which we can neglect due to this violently boiling water. So that's how we get the total thermal resistance. When they're in series like this, you can just add them up like that. So we're also going to use this relationship that our total is equal to 1 over UA. So UA, just like our total, this is going to be constant. So UA is also going to be constant. However, when you're dealing with a radial system, one of the things to remember is that this A, if you're going by the inside of the pipe, that A is going to be quite a bit different than if you're going from the outside of the pipe. So because the product UA is constant, whether you're measuring U based on the inner surface area or the outer surface area, you're going to get a different value because AI does not equal AO. So really this is just semantics. You just got to pick how you're defining UI. And in this problem we're specifically said, we're specifically told to find U based on the inner surface area of the tubes. So now all we need to do is, is quantify our thermal resistances and then we need to solve for U. So we get our total which is also equal to 1 over ui times ai is equal to the convective thermal resistance plus the conductive thermal resistance. So our convective thermal resistance is just 1 over hi times ai and then our conductive thermal resistance is not it's not just l over k and the reason for that is that we have a radial system so I'm going to go to the cheat sheet for the class and we're going to look at the thermal resistances for different types of systems. So here's the thermal resistance. For a plane wall, it's L over K times A. 
However, in a cylindrical system or a spherical system, as the heat propagates through the wall, it encounters a larger and larger area normal to the flow of heat transfer. So you have to take in, you have to use these nonlinear terms to get that that total thermal resistance, which accounts for the thickness all the way through. So we won't be using this plane wall. It's a cylindrical wall, so we have to use this thermal resistance term. So back to our problem. This was wrong. We need to use this guy. Natural log of R2 over R1 divided by 2 pi L K. So that's our total thermal resistance. And then we want to get, we want to get UI times AI. That's going to be equal to the inverse of, of this whole thing. So this is going to be 1 over HI. And I'm going to skip a step here, and I'm going to go ahead and actually plug in what our inner tube surface area is. So first, it's the inside perimeter which is 2 pi ri times the length. So that gives us our convective thermal resistance. And then we have our conductive thermal resistance. OK, and we need to take the inverse of that, because we took the inverse of this term. And then if we wanted to solve for UI, we can divide both sides by AI. And there you go. So in this case, AI is just the same as we defined for the convective thermal resistance on the inside. So that's 2 pi RI times L. And that is our complete answer. So we end up getting UI is equal to 296.7 watts per square meter per Kelvin. So some other important things to note, or just to, so our overall heat transfer coefficient is always going to be lower than either of the heat transfer coefficients because we're adding extra thermal resistance. So the more things you add, the more things for heat that has to have to, have to propagate through, the lower that number will get. So our HI is 346 and our UI is about 297. So it is a little bit lower because we added this extra thermal resistance of the tube. And I obviously skipped all the plugging and chugging part. I'll leave that for you to do on your own.